All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Laura Schaefer, and I'm with the Death Penalty Due Process Review Project also, and I am working on our new Capital Clemency Resource Initiative, which I have lots to say about, but not a lot of time, so I encourage you maybe afterwards, if you have questions about it, to talk to me, and I have learned from some of you already, so thank you to everyone here who has, over the past several months, taken time to speak to me about clemency as we sort of learn about this learn about this important aspect of a capital case. But what I want to do in this presentation is take a little bit of a step back from what we're thinking about in terms of our clemency work now and look at what has happened with clemency in the last, I'm actually gonna start about 300, <laughs> 300 to 400 years ago, sort of go through the historical, historical aspect. So, as many of you already know, but just to sort of summarize for those who may not be familiar, forms of clemency um, can come in different, different manners. You have the possibility of a pardon, which is basically the equivalent of undoing a sentence. Um, in capital cases, what we're thinking about typically is a commutation, which would be a lessening of a sentence. So in a capital case, from a death sentence to a sentence of life without parole. And also what we see in acts of clemency currently are the exercise of reprieves, uh, what Lila was talking about in terms of Washington and other states where the executives have issued reprieves or issued moratoria halting the practice of executions. And when I talk about clemency now, I'm going to be talking about it specifically within the context of capital cases. I know we've been hearing a lot about the clemency power under Obama currently for nonviolent offenders, et cetera, but that's not what I'm focusing on. So I'm taking us back to William Blackstone, who was one of the first to start thinking about clemency in terms of its significance in the common law. So here we have 1769, Blackstone talking about how significant the power of clemency is in a monarchical system. And he is actually speaking about clemency in the monarchy as something that's necessary to generate loyalty between the monarch and the citizens of a state, as something that helps to generate fealty, and as something that is an important aspect of, of what I would call mercy to understand as running alongside what the imposition of, of the criminal law is. But what's also interesting is that Blackstone, when he talks about clemency, then goes on to say that if one were to have a perfect legislative model, a legislative system that worked entirely on its own without a monarch, without a prince, you wouldn't necessarily want the clemency power because to him it would make no sense to have the same institution that created the laws to have the power to abrogate the laws. So he wanted to see only, he, he saw the significance of clemency in a system where you did have someone like a king, like an executive who had this role. So then bringing it to the colonies, uh, we have a few, a few years later, a decade later, we have Hamilton talking also about the significance of clemency. So even though Blackstone is talking about clemency in the terms of the monarchy, and obviously here we're a little bit after we repudiated the monarchy, the founders are still thinking that clemency is a significant aspect of any criminal justice system, something that is necessary to consider to be able to exercise mercy, and seeing that even if a criminal sentence is appropriately carried out as far as the letter of the law, that doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't room for someone at the last stage of review to reach a different decision or to exercise mercy or to decide that in a particular circumstance, even if guilt isn't at issue that other factors may mitigate against the punishment that could have been, that would have been appropriate for guilt. So, and there's some, some great quotes from, <laughs> from the founders on clemency, I must say. So then we're taking us, we're leaping a couple hundred years forward into the modern era. So I was learning also as I was researching this that the idea, the very word of sovereignty in Latin, the power of life over death, that this idea to be able to exercise mercy is something that we contemplate actually within our notion of sovereignty itself, but when we think about capital clemency now in the modern, the modern era, what we're usually thinking about are these famous instances of governors, executives issuing these mass grants. That's where we see the clemency power being exercised and most famously in the last 20 years was in Illinois when Governor Ryan first issued a moratorium, then commuted the row of a hundred some, hundred some individuals on death row prior to the legislature then 
abolishing the death penalty in Illinois. But here again, the, the rationale is somewhat different and he already starts to inject in this quote, you can see we must ensure the public safety of our citizens, but in doing so we must ensure that the ends of justice are served that it was interesting because I, can, I think you can see a little bit the importation of politics now in his explanation of this, that he has to acknowledge that there are gonna be public safety concerns that come or that people will voice this, the public safety concern. And this isn't something that goes into the more conceptual thinking about clemency that Blackstone, that Hamilton talk about. They don't feel the need to justify it in this way, but when the actor is justifying it, they need to talk about this. So one thing that I wanna focus on now is the fact that we've actually seen a pretty significant change in the rate of individual commutations from before Furman, before Gregg, to the modern era of the death penalty, so the 40 years after Gregg. So research shows that in the first half of the 20th century, and I tried to get the data to actually find if I could do 40 years prior to Gregg, but the data on individual commutations just doesn't exist for every state, so I have to <laughs> sort of go with the, the first half of the 20th century to represent the time period. So the first half of the 20th century, one out of every four to five sentences was commuted. This gave us a clemency rate of about 20 to 25 percent, which if you practice now, you know is pretty extraordinary compared to what people are looking at today. If you look at commutations after 1976, um, I think actually now we're at 1,432 with the execution last night, but from mass grants, we have 213 acts of clemency. From individual grants, we only have 67. So a very small number and which puts the rate of individual commutations in the last 40 years at about 4%. So the question is what happened in the last 40 years that so significantly changed the exercise of the clemency power. So I have a few theories that I would posit. The first one is actually that Greg, when it came back, allayed the fears of the executive that the death penalty was too arbitrary, was too harsh, and they now felt that the role that they had to serve prior to Furman was no longer necessitated by their actions in commuting sentences, that the, that the statutes were constitutional, the death penalty was being applied appropriately, there wasn't a role for the executive to step in. In addition, you have the cases after Gregg that are coming up for clemency, let's say the 10, 15 years after 1976, coinciding with what we heard about yesterday in terms of the fear and high murder rates and sort of paranoia about crime that occurred in the 1980s and 90s. In addition, you have some particularly famous cases of acts of mercy or in Willie Horton's case a furlough kind of going wrong and being used in a political context to show that the politicians you're electing can't keep you safe and so it became seen as politically non-viable to exercise mercy. So you have a confluence of Greg and this other factor. So <laughs> I would like to posit at the end of this that not all hope is necessarily lost because I think in the same way that you had two factors together with Greg and then tough on crime that reduced the rate of clemencies, what you have now is new interest in mass incarceration and the problems of, um, of criminal, criminal justice reform being something that we're thinking about and we're also having reconsideration of the death penalty. So this might be a moment and putting these two things together where we can start advocating for clemency again as a real tool to stop executions. And talk to me more about my project. <laughs> I don't have time to go into it now, but thank you. Well, we certainly do have hope that the work that Laura is doing can maybe help improve the quality of, of clemency. But anybody have, we have time for a couple of quick questions for Laura. Does anyone have questions? All right. Oh, I've got one. Maybe just a quick uh, comment, and I, I don't know if it's a question, but for, for those of you who haven't seen the state reports that Laura and her colleagues have been working on, I really urge you to look at them. Uh, we've done a lot of clemency work in Arizona, almost uniformly. Uh, unsuccessfully, but we, we, we learned 
things that we had not even thought about when we looked at at the report that that uh, they did on on our state, and I assume that the others are are equally as uh, detailed and in depth. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. files on all the clemencies between 1972 and 1990 on file at the National Death Penalty Archives at SUNY Albany. Great, yeah, it was the sort of the, the 1900 to 1972 I could find for some states, but otherwise I just found a rate, but that's good to know to, to dig through there. Well, and if I remember correctly, when we finished this capitalclemency.org resource in the summer and we're, pu we're putting together materials we've gotten from members of the community, um, we are actually going to try to do some of those with search terms, with, with relevant tags so people can find them based on issues. So I believe Laura and some of her interns and volunteers are working on that right now. So hopefully make that a usable in another way too. Well, thank you. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.